Hi, this is the Frank Williams Show. So we're back and we're doing part two here with uh, the guest that we had last week, uh, Mr. James Martin, the former regional director in NAACP. So this is, and we also have another guest, Mr. Ken Johnson, who's here to uh, talk about some of the different changes that has occurred in San Francisco. You are in the trenches with Frank Williams at the Frank Williams Show. So, welcome, fellas. Thank uh, you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for having me on the show. It's man. good to have <laughs> you on here, Ken. And uh, I just want to say real quick that Ken is the one that brought me into this. <laughs> um, you know, I actually, you know what I did, Ken? I went on Facebook. Uh-huh. And I said, well, if I did a show, would you watch? And, man, I got over 100 and some hits saying, man, go do it. Yeah. You're going to watch. Go ahead and do it. Come on, man. Keep it real. Just do it and keep it real. And so um, my focus is to bring people on that work in the trenches doing this work. And so we're going to be hitting a lot of different topics, man. Mm-hmm. We're going to be, of course, I'm known as the chairman, so the chairman is also going to be pulling out some topics. And we just going to dig into it, man. And so okay. there, this is no... Um, no holes bar, and we gonna dig into some of the things that the people want to hear about, not only in San Francisco but abroad. That is affecting, yeah. especially African Americans, right, right here in San Francisco alone, and people who are, are, are um, as we would say, that's living uh, below poverty, living within poverty, mm-hmm. and even the middle class is being eliminated today. Mm-hmm. And so we was talking in uh, where we left off at, you know, we was talking about some of the social effect and um, everything from population uh, being dropped in San Francisco or African Americans to um, the think tanks that we have here and some of the strategies that we need to start sticking with in order to change some mechanisms around here. Is that about where we were, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, um, continue that conversation, James, and then I want then I want I would like for Ken to chime in on that. You know. Well, c- kind of. I, I, as I recall, when we left off, I, I was I think probably my my last comment had something to do about you know how we how we measure you know our values and what really how we really value things and and from my perspective that today you, you know everybody is really into what is politically correct. And sometimes versus morally correct, mm-hmm. or or what's what's correct in the, in the best interest of our children. You know, I've seen too many times in, in in our own communities people who move based on the politics without having the big picture of the well-being, overall well-being of the community. Uh, of the community, and, and and to me, political agendas agendas all too frequently are about an individual. You know, and, and it's not supposed to be that way, but that's how I see it, and that's how, and I think those those kind of attitudes have have uh, really helped us to be led astray, and 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 not focus on one of the greatest priorities we have, and that is the future of our youth. Mm-hmm. I, I I'll always remember, uh, I was on uh, quite some years ago. I was on the board of directors of the Bay Area Black United Fund, and we brought in Alex Haley, uh, uh-huh. um, for uh, as a speaker once. And one of the things that Alex Haley said. To, to the audience, and, and his, he said, because the, the theme, this was just back in the 80s, and the theme was the African American community into the year 2000. And so he, said, he started contemplating, you know, what does our community need to do to prepare to go into the year 2000? And he said, quoting uh, one of his friends, another well-known author, author uh, Al- Alvin Toffler, he said, Toffler said to us, man, when I look at your community, what, what I, I have to see is that all too often, everybody is always working on the most immediate need. You know, and that's of necessity. You know, people have to get jobs right now. People, you know, maybe needs f- f- food and, and we've got to get groceries and, and all those immediate things that, 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 that keep us in crisis mode. He said, but in terms of planning, you don't really have many people really planning on where you're going in the future with a picture of the future and how to achieve that. And so, uh, and his conclusion was that we've got to be able in our communities, in our community life, to be able to plan in more direction at a time, in more than one direction at a time. And but my and my thought along those lines is that, but we've got to start the process of doing definitive strategic planning. Yeah, and it's got to be uh, community-based. Uh, 
everybody's got to be involved. Uh, my, my, my feelings along the same lines is that, you know, we got to we got to lift each other up. We got to uh, uh, just like uh, I'll tell, tell you uh, 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 an example of what I'm talking about, just like the, uh, the Yoshi's building in Fillmore. Now, it's been closed for some time, right? Mm -hmm. It's been closed, but when it was open, it was always under the ownership of somebody that was a foreigner to the community. The first people were, were, were uh, the people who owned Yoshi's. Now, the community didn't have, really have nothing to do with it, you know, as far as employment, as far as putting on shows there, as far as doing anything really positive there. So now that it's vacant, now that it's vacant, what we're trying to do is, is, is bring life into it by having the community, those experts and those professional people who've given, uh, uh, like Bobby Webb, he, he, he's, uh, he, he did the gospel in the park for years. Emmett Powell uh, has had, uh, uh, I mean, blue, um, let me, excuse me, uh, Emmett Powell has produced gospel shows for the longest. He, he's, he, he's, he even has a, a gospel radio show. Bobby Webb produced gospel shows in Golden Gate Park mm -hmm. uh, on an ongoing basis. We got uh, uh, Maestro Curtis. He, he, he works with uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, Mexican cat, what's his name? Uh, he, he performed at the... Uh, at the uh, Black Cuisine, uh, get his name. Uh, any, uh, uh, anyway, we got to bring in our producers to produce shows to bring people in, you know. And we could, uh, and in that same place, we could have a a, uh, a program to teach uh, uh, kids or people interested in how to be a chef. A big kitchen in there. We could do things to bring them to bring the community in there, you know, and, 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 and places and do, doing things like that. Also, you got the place in Hunters Point, the Long Island Club, right? Now, it had a fire there. So that could be turned into a training program to teach people carpentry. As you're fixing up the, people, as you're fixing up the building, you're, you're giving people skills. So after the building is finished, you got some carpenters who can afford to live there and you, the, the building is finished. You know, you're bringing the community together. So what I see is, you know, fixing up and, and, and doing the best we can with, with what we have. You know, fixing up the community. You know, you got, if, 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 you, if there's houses that need painting, we ought to have a program that teach people how to paint. So they, after, after, the, after the painting is over, then they got some skills. We have to improve our communities ourselves. You know, increase the, create jobs, create the jobs by fixing up the community. Well, you know, in a way, I understand what you're talking about um, when you say what um, we as a culture. I guess you mean either we meaning the community or we as African Americans. I mean, African Americans. Or right. So here's the thing about that that I'm gonna bring up. Okay. We can want to do all that. But we don't own it. That's what I'm saying. And if we don't own it, it's what? being bought out as we speak. Right, right, right. Because That's San Francisco right. it's, it's a, is right. a gold mine. It is. Period. It's it a is. gold mine. And everything is being bought. You got people walking to people's doors talking about, hey, I want to buy your property. Yeah. And got the money and let's, let's sign a deed right now. That's what's happening in San Francisco. So, but as we talk about strategic planning and how we go about making accomplishments uh, for sustainability, that's the discussion that, that need to be brought out a little more and to what level is it being taken to? Um, for example, is in there a level of uh, uh, um, an African-American component of the mayor's office? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a component for African Americans at the mayor's office where they have somebody in charge that's looking after the well-beings of the African Americans in San Francisco? And if so, 
what is being done about that, what is happening with the crisis. Because right now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It is a crisis. If this was anywhere else, or I'll just put it like this. I'm not going to even say if, the, if, 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 if I was rich, I don't even know if I'd be on this microphone right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put it to you like this. The richness that I do have is for my love for the community and it's for, for my love for people. And what's going on right now uh, during the first show, we was talking about how this is being developed into a single society. So therefore, the middle class is going to be eliminated. Uh, the poor is going to be eliminated. They're already being pushed out. They're already being pushed out of the city. And the way you do that is social control. So if I can control the employment and I can put quotas on employment, Right, and I could raise, and I have power over the housing, and I could raise the rent of the housing. Right, I I even have that much control with other forces of government to where pretty soon they're gonna be raising the interest rates. Mm -hmm. So then that's you know, be. like right now, everybody hyped up. Man, you see the gas prices dropping. Man, what do you yeah. mean? Do I see the gas yeah. strike? It's it's just so much game to this, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just that um, we're not being awakened on a larger scale. Right. We being taught to remain in issues. And while we remaining in issues, the whole them. world around us is changing. Yeah. Yeah. While we still on the same issues, like yeah. I brought up to uh, Mr. Martin earlier, like, you know, they marched in the 60s. It was effective. But was it, was it really more effective than Martin Luther King putting pressure on the government to the point that Lyndon B. Johnson finally gave in? Mm hmm. You see what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Was it the marches or was it the power that he accumulated of having people behind him mm -hmm. to show? And it could be, and we, we can honorably say it could be both, mm -hmm. right? But whereas today, we even have Black Lives Matters just happening across the United States. But I tell you, when the, what was they called, the 97 percenters? Yeah. When they, the 99 percenters, when they marched in protest all across the world, and remember, you was talking about uh, unifying and bringing people together collectively for mm -hmm. a reason. And when they did it, they shut down ports. They shut down banks. Now, who they is this? 97 percenters. Don't you don't know. remember that? No. Well, running back, James. Do you remember when that happened? That was right after yeah, the great yeah. crash, man. When, wait, when wait, real wait, estate... Wait. When the real estate oh, yeah, market yeah, yeah. crashed okay, let, and people was losing their homes and losing their they houses yeah. and losing their businesses, people who, have was, who was employed for 15, 20 years lost their jobs, mm -hmm. all the way down to even working in hospitals, working in nonprofits closed down. Mm -hmm. People lost their houses and everything during this great crash, right? Mm -hmm. And the 97 percenters all across from here to Europe marched. <laughs> shutting it down until they had to go back and renegotiate how they were going to do these housing contracts with people and, and make them more affordable. And that's when they dropped the interest rate. Hmm. You don't remember that. It's power yeah. It's power and unity. So we have to come with a strategy uh, and, and that's, that's to help to help the economical force where, you know, it's pretty much leveled in San Francisco. Now, everybody not go, everybody here is not multi-millionaires, but in a minute, everybody here will be multi-millionaires because they're being brought in through the tech systems. Yeah. They're being brought in. Yeah, they're being they, brought they're in. They're pretty much being manufactured. And, and to the point that where we have nonprofits that house people, that house people who are living in poverty, three, four people to a house, to now they came up Meaning they, meaning uh, uh, capitalists, and came right. up with another plan. Well, I tell you what, let's market into this venture, and we we'll do shared housing. How dare you? But it's taking off mm -hmm. right here in San Francisco. It is. It is. So when you talk about a place like Yoshi's, who, which was a for-profit industry, and was built by Yoshi's, right? No, Japanese. It was, by, it was built by city city money. Well, the city, the they city. use city money in right. however way they negotiated right. that. But my point is that when we talk about establishments like that, and then we talk about our own economical base, we only got 3% of African Americans left here in San Francisco. Where the march going to come from to save a, 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 no. a, a business they don't even belong to us? It, it doesn't have to be just a, a march like marching down the street in my mind. Uh, we're not talking about just getting up and saying, okay, you know, Everybody, come on and, and, and jump on board. And one sense, we are saying that. 
because we, you know we, we we've got to be able to rally support and do that effectively. Um, and 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 but but in order to do that, there's a lot more. We've got to educate people. All right. Uh, you know, make make help people understand the issues. You know, one of the biggest uh, uh, and most important elements of a voter registration is the voter education part. Mm -hmm. You know, you because if you get a bunch of people just to register to vote, they go to the polls and don't understand what's at stake with the issues that they're confronted by at the ballots, then, you know, they're, they're, they're even more danger. You know, so we've got to, and, and we've got to get out of that, 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 that mindset of developing voter registration campaigns only before the next election. Mm -hmm. Some of our, if not all of our, our organizations have to think ahead and say, we, we've got to do voter education and registration all year, every year. Not just just before it comes, because we're trying to develop. I, and and you, you mentioned Frank that you know the the, the small number is three percent, but yet there is you know when, during my time as regional director for the NAACP, <coughs> I, I I remember seeing times uh, where communities that had a small African American population frequently were more effective in creating change in their communities in those po those populations where their the numbers were greater. Mm -hmm. And primarily I, I saw that that came from the fact that where the numbers were smaller, the people were smarter in terms of getting done things. They, where the numbers were smaller, they, they coalesced with other non-black people. You know, in fact, with the, Af with the uh, Martin Luther King holiday, I I'll always remember there was only one African American in the legislature uh, in, in, in Utah. Mm. His name was Terry Anderson. Uh, Terry uh, was uh, um, the lone voice for the, for the Martin Luther King uh, holiday in his state in the legislature. But people in the community got together. African American leaders came together with uh, um, Latino leaders and Native Americans uh, and, and, and a broad number of other people. And they said, we can, we can find some unity in our agenda so that we can work together. Mm -hmm. They looked for ways to work together. Now, they didn't agree on everything, but those things that they did agree on, they agreed to work mm -hmm. together in a way so we can com accomplish some common goals. And if we work together, you know, the numbers for education and, and dropout rates in San Francisco among our small black population, if we work together more effectively and, and strategically with other groups who experience similar problems, we can be effective for our young people and theirs Another, as well. Right. right. I can. Right. So, watch this, Ken. I'm listening, right? Yeah. And this is a great, this is a great conversation right here. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. So, I'm working two, three jobs. Mm -hmm. Single parent. And that's multiplied throughout the various districts in, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Multiplied. So, my children, I'm giving them the best that I have in morals and values. But guess what? We don't traditionally, like in the 60s, sit at the same dinner plate, I mean, at the same table eating dinner together. Right. Cool. We don't eat breakfast together. Right. You know, I got to get them ready for don't. school. I got to get right. them ready for school, grab a, 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 a McMuffin or something, throw it in, it, shove it down their throat, have a lunch already made for them by the time I give them to school. Because in some schools, they don't have lunch because, you know, you got to pay for their lunches in yeah. school. I'm just saying. I'm right. just saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I hear all this good stuff about what we could do collectively. But, you know, but my voice isn't being heard. And not only my voice isn't being heard, because there's those that think that I'm still a welfare recipient and I'm working two jobs taking care of my child, asking for help. So the question is, when do we stop asking for help and when do we go in here and really show numbers? Because you do need numbers. And, yeah. and, and no matter how eloquent it can sound, and you can go in there and everybody can pretend to agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. They can pretend to agree, and that don't mean it's going to happen. Because right now, money is the root of all evils. Money is running everything right now. Right. What is your take on that? Well, well my take is this. Uh, I think, uh, again, we, we, we still got to, as, as my man was saying, we got to come together. And there's so many jobs in the city that uh, I think one of the main issues is we need to uh, you know, try to stop some of these jobs so till they employ, till they start em, uh, uh, employing people from the city, because all these, when you come into San Francisco, you see all these cranes, all these buildings being built, but none of the, the residents, hardly any of the residents, are, are are being hired for these good-paying jobs. 
You know, so that's why you got to have two jobs because one job ain't paying you what you're worth. You know, so if, if, if we could get the community together to go down to City Hall or wherever and, 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 and put some of the laws that they have already have on the books for them to, 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 to activate these laws now. Oh, but, wait a minute, Ken, but wait a minute, Ken. Wait, wait, let me finish. Didn't, somebody, let me finish. didn't you, didn't, finish. Didn't you me... and other people already voted somebody in office to have your voice for things like that? No, wait, wait, wait. Let, let me, but the city, these things are on the books. Now, they, there's a friend of mine called uh, Fred Jordan. He, he runs the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Now, he's got a, 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 a resolution on the, uh, on the books where they're supposed to hire for every million-dollar contract the city gets, they're supposed to hire a brother in CAD. And, a brother. And a, 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 a black man. A, a, a black brother man. In, in CAD. For every what? For every million dollars that they spend. So, James, for every million that they spend, we get to hire one black. Well, they're supposed to. It's, on, it's, already, it's already a resolution. It's already a resolution. It's not being, it's not being carried out. Also, also uh, Supervisor... Uh, What's his name? Supervisor. Uh, this one supervisor, he's got an ordinance on there where uh, they're supposed to hire with city residents first before they hire outside the city. It's not being it's not being carried out. So we, we have a lot of stuff that if we push it through, it probably we we probably be able to hire all the brothers that, that need a job if they want to work. You know, so it's a lot of stuff already on the books. If we could push it through, then things 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 might change. But I, why I, do we have, have to I, push I, through I, what's already on the books? Can you explain that to me? Well, why we got to push it through? Well, I mean, it, it, I guess people are racist. I mean, the people at City Hall they want they want they, oh, they don't want us on those jobs. I guess it's a racial thing. I mean, that's all I can see. My, 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 my thought is, you know, one of the things that, that we never did, and, and, and this is, you know, solely my, my opinion uh, based on my experience, after the successes uh, as they were, such as they were of the 60s for African Americans in the Civil Rights era, one of the things we never effectively did uh, was, was to manage the successes that, that, that we had been able to achieve. And, you know, it, it's, it's like buying a new car and never washing it, never changing the oil, uh, you know, uh, don't, you know, never taking it for a tune-up. And, and, and realistically, you know, we began to build, you know, on, uh, to some extent on, on some of the gains that were made. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that I, w I was a part of, you know, may helping to make many of those gains in, in, in many, many of the different areas of my, my career over, over time. Yet, we, we never created significant me uh, maintenance mechanisms to be there to help us through all that, which, which means we allowed uh, ourselves to believe that every generation a that, that, that came along would already have the knowledge that those of us who had been involved with the struggle had, and, we, and, and that automatically was passed on, and, and, people, and young people automatically learned everything, and it were just automatically building on all the successes that, we, that we've ever had. And that's not the case, because we haven't, because we haven't maintained a high degree of, of, of uh, education uh, around um, historical progresses and successes. We haven't continued to educate our children on how to make that continue to happen, how to make success continue. Yeah, I, 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 and, and, I, I mean, not, not, not effectively we haven't done it, because if we had done it, we would not have so many young people dropping out of school. We would have, we, we would have still, tell me where there are African-American history programs uh, you know, that exist on a regular basis that don't have to be part of the school system. My point here is that as people, I'll say, we have a, as great a responsibility to work in our own best interest as we do have a responsibility to hold the people at City Hall accountable. So we, we have to think about what is it that we're organizing as a people in our own best interest because if we haven't done it, we don't have a mechanism to call people, other people into question. And, 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 that, and that's, that's, a big, that's a big issue. So we have the preponderance of the responsibility for our own well-being. I mean, we can kick somebody else's butt, but only if we do that, to, but, particularly but, with small but, numbers, we can only do that if we do that together. Well, you got to get, people need jobs, first of all. You got to have a job. You sure. got to have a job. Now, if they're building all these buildings and they're not hiring the people who live here, 
Whose fault is that? Is he, is that the people that live here? I didn't say it was anybody's fault. That's what you said in so many words. I That's what I you said. You said that. we haven't we haven't been 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 doing our been doing our duty to do. To okay, then you think everything that, that, that that we should have been doing has been done? No, I don't. No, no I don't. What no, I don't. Is. What I'm saying is that if 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 you can't pay your rent, if you got to have two jobs to pay your rent, then you can't spend the quality time. <laughs> With with uh, with your kids yeah. the way that you really want to, mm -hmm. to give them the encouragement. You you encourage them as much as you can, with the time you have. Sure. Mm -hmm. But if you had more time, if you had a re if you had a good job where you was getting paid, you was working, you know, eight hours. You could come home, spend time with your kids, make sure that they learn or or, or was into got into something that they need to get get into instead of, you know, spending half the time. You know, you're still going to spend time, but you ain't going to spend, you, you can't spend that much time because you don't have it. And you're not making that much money. Well, so, I'm, so I'm the certainly only thing not saying, I'm saying can't anything uh, uh, no, adverse to that. No, no, the only thing I'm saying is this. The city, just like, okay, now they brought cracking in, which screwed everything up. A lot of, uh, before crack, things was, things was going a lot better than, than, they, than, they, uh, than they are now. After afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, so that was put on us, you know. So that that sort of crippled a lot of it. It, it crippled a lot of people. It, 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 you know, a lot of businesses went under. All kind of things happened. But you know, uh, then you know, there's so many things that's against us. You you have liquor stores on every corner. Uh, you used to. I mean, that that's getting better, you know. But. Depends I, on what neighborhood you I, I, I go back to I go back to the job situation. The job situation is the key. If you have an employed community, you have less crime. Sure. You got less crime. You know, so if they're not giving out the jobs in the community, then uh, it's not just with the, the contracting companies, it's with the smaller companies too. The small uh 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 uh, 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 you know, uh, small, sm small uh, contractors, where 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 they they can hire some people from the community to uh, uh, do small small jobs. You know, now you got youngsters seeing these residents driving trucks around, business people. So now they want to be they they might want to be a construction worker or or, or a carpenter or something like that. So without these these jobs. The city has the major the major uh, 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 thing with the city, I think, is to hire more uh, people, residents from the city, and hire those people who have been overlooked for the preponderance of the time, you know, uh, for the preponderance of the time. My issue is, is it comes from the fact that you know uh, we send our children to high school and, 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 and in San Francisco we have a high level of dropout, but those even who succeed and come through high school and then get to college, we, get, we ask them to get the best education they can and then we ask them to go and look to find out who's gonna give them a job. My point comes from the fact that we need to be well and deeply invested in trying to create, teach our children to create they the infrastructure that. for the jobs that they need. And we, and, and I'm, I don't give, I'm not, and, uh, be careful. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not into the mindset of shutting somebody down. In order well, to the point is that, the point is that both of you guys have um, a good debate going on, <laughs> but the infrastructure that, that's being built can be destroyed at a blink of an eye, right? That's right. So he started off saying there's a lot of jobs here. And, in fact, there is a lot of jobs here. And most that. of them is tech jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we was also, you guys, real fast, real fast, and you guys was also talking about one say, well, it's the government. The other one say, well, I can't blame the government. We have to take responsibility ourselves. I didn't say and, the government is blameless by no means. Okay. By no means. Well, I misheard that. Okay. And, no. And... So, my point, my what I want to get to is this, and what I want, what I want to ask you guys real quick. We only got a minute left because I'm looking at the Maslow theory as you guys are even going through this. Yeah. Maslow and if your, theory. When that is, Hierarchy if your basic needs, needs and, yeah. if your basic needs not getting met, how can you attain any goals that you set forth? So, if it's like that individually, how you think it is like that for a community? 
So if you got a community that sat back and did strategies of achievement, such as you mentioned in the first episode, the things that Mrs. Westbrook did to help even bring development into San Francisco to develop a Bayview Hunters Point, for example, mm -hmm. right? And then next thing you know, you have no more housing development. Right, mm, that's right. in the best interest of, of people that's middle class or, or low, but they bring in big businesses that all these cranes, and we're seeing them build more housing today. Mm -hmm. they building up in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. they getting others and building out in San Francisco. And you know what? It's low market value is the way to get in, but we got this lottery that's going on that's not... <laughs> We got a lottery going yeah, see, on and everything and, and else. That, and that lottery, see, I, I, I need to say something about that lottery. That not a lottery is supposed to be, should be changed for black folks only. Because every time they have a lottery, who gets in there? But that's too who much like affirmative there? action. Yeah, yeah, but, we, but the whole thing is see, that's people a need to. show. That's going to be a different to, show. People need to object behind that because, you know, uh, you have a lottery and, and, and it's, it's preposterous to me that when the lottery is over, it's. it's a certain class of people that get all that that get out of all of the housing. Well, what I'm getting at is so that how, how so that when be? your basic needs are not being met as a community, mm -hmm. let's look at it as a community. Then, then who do you look to? And my thing is still, who did you vote for? Who's your mouthpiece? Mm -hmm. And yeah, we can do enchant and I had a dream and all of that. Right. We can do all that. A million of us can walk up to City Hall right now and most of them is going underground to get up out of there. And it's not going to come out there and listen to your concerns. Mm -hmm. OK, that, that, so that, that's but Frank, that that's isn't that the point? And, 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 and that is one voice. Can I be? Yes, we, we elected them to represent us, but I cannot go up there by myself and get them to do any one thing for me. We've got to organize and be able to speak with a collective voice to, to the greatest extent possible to get City Hall to be responsible. I've been there. I know. I've had them totally ignore me. Okay. I, you know. You know. So we've got to ha we've got to come together to be able to move together. Well, you know what? Again, this was a great discussion. Nick gonna go on and on and on, mm. right? And so what I like to do right now is like thank my guests. Um, I have Mr. Ken Johnson here. And I have Mr. James Martin. Been a uh, pleasure, Frank. Right, residents of San Francisco, business owners and the like, and and they are true champions. And um, I really, really have my hat off to them. And we're gonna continue this discussion. We're gonna have new faces and new people and people from the Bay that's gonna be on the Frank Williams show in the future. And so I just want you to know that we're gonna keep bringing people in the trenches to the Frank Williams show. <laughs> so we appreciate you. Thank you very much for being here. All the audience is applauding. <laughs> <laughs>